Hello friends and welcome. Today we're going to talk about how to play the lane if you have a really bad matchup. In this case, I'm Shadow Demon. I'm pretty bad at him. We're going to make mistakes. Uh, we've got a Tidehunter off lane into a Monkey King and Enchantress. So these are two really strong heroes and they have a favorable matchup into the Tidehunter. At least the Monkey King does. So uh, this isn't a great lane where we're not going to get a ton out of it unless, you know, maybe they mess up. Sure. But in theory, if everyone's playing about equal, we're on the back foot in my opinion. Uh, don't worry if you don't play these heroes. Uh, there's all sorts of bad matchups you might get into. Uh, so we're going to do a deep dive into one of the ways you can approach a bad matchup, which is that when your offlaner can clear stacks like a Tidehunter or a Beastmaster in Axe, uh, instead of like trying to play the lane a ton when you're just going to get like killed a lot by the, the enemy heroes, you can focus on getting Equilibrium to come back keeping these camps blocked, specifically the small camp, we're talking from the four support perspective here, and then you focus on stacking or uh, helping your mid or maybe your other side lane. It kind of depends on the game. Uh, but in this game, uh, I'm actually going to also block this camp. I don't know if that was fully correct or not, to be honest, but uh, with an Enchantress in this lane, I figured she'd make use of both camps. Typically, if you don't have an Enchantress or a Chen, I would leave this camp open because as part of trying to get Equilibrium to come back, using your pull camp to help you with that is great. But uh, just because, like I said, the Enchantress, I thought, you know, we'd have issues. So I went ahead and bought two sentries right off the bat, uh, because if she comes and tries to deward this before the first minute expires, I either want to body block it or come in with a nether sentry, uh, remove hers. And I could block this one right off the bat, but I kind of want to save this other sentry for this this camp, and that's why I'm uh, kind of waiting right now to see if I can just body block this camp instead. And then because I'm thinking about roaming and stacking a lot, I decided to leave a observer for this tide hunter. I want him to know uh, information uh, of where these heroes are so that if he sees like someone trying to wrap around he can you know start to back off play safe while I'm gone uh, if I'm in the lane then I'm helping to provide that information but when you plan to leave a lot you know try to have an observer um, more useful in the laning stage and I, I could put it here or like somewhere over here those would certainly get you that information but because I plan to be putting a lot of uh, sentries in these camps then that means the enemy should be bringing a lot of sentries as well that means any observers like in this area will get killed so it's kind of hoping out here in the lane you know maybe we cut some trees it would provide good vision just to like see heroes back here are they like you know running to the twin gate are they actually just like going towards a pull or like are they coming around you know a little bit of the vision you can see here i actually should have put it further i didn't realize they actually enchantress blocked this camp because she's thinking the same thing that we need to pull the lane back so i'm going to try to use this camp so she actually put a sentry here which did get this observer i didn't i thought she would just want the camp so i didn't even think about that but i should have put it further out to get it to survive uh but no big deal i mean kind of a big deal but you know what can we do about it so step one is to get equilibrium to come back hit your own creeps as much as possible if that's your goal uh, another thing you can do in this case tide blocked all the creeps you can let one creep go by like here with this one right you come in between these two creeps let one go by block the other three i've talked about this in other videos but if they block at all your creeps walk under tower you're great if they don't block then one creep meets all four creeps first so he'll die right away and then it'll be like four versus three uh, sometimes the enemies do stuff sometimes there's stuff you can do uh, whatever you need to you're trying to get equilibrium to come back tide did some creep aggro here monkey king kind of tanked two melee creeps for a little bit so uh, you can see here like we have one creep left and it's already low i actually should use the illusions to probably deny it i wasn't thinking like i said don't play much shadow demon um, but that could have been good and then you'd see we have two bonus creeps alive so that's really good the equilibrium's already coming back or it would be except uh they kind of like aggroed back here but it's still going to be like four creeps versus six creeps so in the end this will come back so we're already kind of meeting our goal i blocked this camp here uh with my body um and now if you're thinking like hey i'm enchantress i'm the five support uh, i don't want this lane to push and you kind of see this happening right but these camps are blocked so i mean what can you do the, the main thing you can do is to shove the lane in and get them all killed on the tower. But actually, in a lot of pub games, people don't think about this option. Uh, they only rely on the pull camps. So that's why this is going to be like pretty effective in a pub game. You won't really see this in a pro match because pros are going to like shove this in and then dive and stuff like that. Uh, but we are pub players, and so this is going to be pretty effective. Um, so I'm trying to keep an eye on that. I, I think I saw she had a sentry. Otherwise, I just thought it's what she was doing because I saw her walking over here. And I wanted to try to stop her depending where she was going to place it. 
but unfortunately she put it in the back and I saw her like moving like this. It means she's looking for my sentry. And the fact that I don't see it anywhere out here means it's somewhere back here. And I didn't want to come back here. She's level two. Uh, Monkey King is a very mobile hero. If he chooses to take tree dance, I don't think I saw what he'd picked yet. Uh, so I knew if I like went back for their sentry, it'd be really dangerous. But I didn't realize, I wasn't thinking about it. I could use, I could have done this sooner and use the illusions to find it back here and maybe beat her to this. Uh, but what I'm gonna do instead is once I realized that, I came back, blocked the camp again, killed her sentry. So that's kind of why I came prepared, right? If she had unblocked this and I didn't have the sentry and I go, oh, now I gotta buy a sentry, I need to wait like 30 seconds for that courier to come out. It's already gonna be two minutes plus, which means if I, I do that and I don't body block, then this camp's gonna spawn. If I try to body block, but they're prepared, they're like zoning me out and stuff, then I'm gonna die trying to do this, all that. But by having the sentry already purchased, it was part of my plan uh, going into this, then I'm prepared and Enchantress wasn't thinking as hard on it. So she doesn't have another sentry to come and do this. So that means for the second minute of, of uh, the potential spawn, I have successfully blocked it. And then I'm gonna come over here and body block this again, which I maybe didn't need to. But when I looked at this, this is like good equilibrium for us and I didn't want them to mess it up in any way. And if I do let this hard camp spawn, uh, that opens up a chance for them to do a hard camp pull. And then when, when we try to fight over this, right, I kind of favor them over us, especially if Enchantress has a point in Enchant, depending what camp spawns, right, she, she'd be able to bully us out. So that's why here at the two minutes, I'm going to block this. And this whole time, right, Tidehunter is doing this. I will admit this plan depends on your off laner knowing a bit what to do as well right, uh, making sure they bounce the wave and not just shove it out. So if you need to, try to communicate that. If they don't do it properly, I mean, what can you do, right? At least you are trying to play properly as a support. Um, but you see here by body blocking it, just trying to avoid Enchantress, not really interested in fighting. Um, the lane is kind of starting to come back a little bit. They're both doing creep aggros, but our creeps are a little weaker. And so depending how safe you feel, you can come over, try to like hit it. That's kind of what I'm doing there. Um, it's not perfect, and in fact, they're kind of going on me here a little bit. Uh, but if you, this is like another part of playing bad matchups. If you can focus attention on yourself, then that's good, and it, it leaves your offlaner alone to like kind of kind of get uh, some of the stuff they need. I didn't really. That wasn't really my plan. Shadow Demon isn't usually that type of hero. Um, oh, which by the way, I should mention, I bought a win lace this game because I wasn't planning to play the lane right either through these, uh, you know, body blocking stuff, sentry blocking. Uh, maybe creep dragging if none of this was working. Uh, a lot of that just depends on movement speed, which usually isn't that useful if you're only playing the lane directly nowadays. Everyone's preferring stats, stuff like that. But if you're planning to avoid the lane as much as you can, uh, roam, stack, right? That's a ton of moving. And so buying early movement speed items can be really useful. I don't know if it's like perfect to start windlace or if I should have just rushed boots, but that was my philosophy for this. And so since I'm super low here at three minutes, I'm gonna start the, the double stacking. If you're a ranged hero, you can do this. If you're a melee hero, you might need a spell. I'm Shadow Demon, so kind of using a mix of both, even though I didn't really need to. Uh, I actually messed up some stacks later. I don't I don't know what I was thinking, guys. But uh, the idea was there, I just I just screwed it up. So here, this whole time while I'm stacking and leaving, look at Tidehunter. He is fine, he's back here by his tower. Hey, you might have your bad pub offlaners who still die in this situation, right? Like I said, what can you do in that case? You're giving him what he needs, and that's what Tidehunter's getting right now. He can't get every last hit, and he is getting harassed, but we have put him in a safe spot so that we can come back and heal, and even if I had TP'd mid to like fill the bottle and then walk bottom, uh, Tide's probably still like in an okay spot for a few more seconds, and then I hopefully get there. But in this case, I'm able to stack, heal, and then TP back, and now that the lane's pushing out, I'm here again to help him. When I saw this happening, I know that our lane is pushing in. If we can't do anything, then it's gonna stay here for a while. So I need this pull camp, or I need to like, we need to be the ones to shove in the lane and get some weird equilibrium stuff going to get it to come back because I still want to go do more stacks. I want to help this Void Spirit get runes against this uh, Nyx Assassin. Maybe I want to come top, um, but if I want to do any of that, I need Tidehunter to feel okay. And so uh, we're going to apply a little bit of pressure here. I was waiting for the four minute rune to spawn or the four minute camp to spawn. I wasn't watching, so I thought like maybe Enchanters had body blocked it or maybe Tide had done it himself. Uh, I didn't realize that they had body blocked it or they had put their own sentry there. When I see her doing this, there's not that much I can do. And I, I should have paid more attention to the time. I think I should have actually like walked in here and body blocked this, but I, I wasn't paying enough attention. So now they've got a small camp and I saw that this one didn't spawn. 
Um, but I felt like if I tried to unblock it now, it doesn't really do anything because it's not going to spawn till five minutes. So right now, I looked at the minimap and I saw that Void Spirit secured the top water rune and Nyx currently was not running for this water rune because he's probably trying to get last hits here. Um, so I decided like I'm going to head over and maybe even if I can't steal the rune, maybe two of us can do something because if we're having a bad time bottom, right, I need my mid laner to be doing well so that he can help cover us, help recover. Maybe we can get a monkey king kill and all that. So that's why um, I'm not just trying to like play a lane that sucks. I'm trying to do other things, add value through stacking or add value through a mid laner who can then help us bottom. That's why I come up here. And we do get a little lucky uh, in this kill, right? He, he could have gotten away. And in fact, if he probably didn't try to TP, he ah, maybe he would have died. I don't know. Uh, but there is a little bit of luck on getting the kill uh, right here. It was very close. Um, but you can see, like, okay, great. Like, how much would I have really done in the bottom lane that time? Now, while I was gone, this is what's happening in the bottom lane. That's why we tried to shove it in, because I was hoping these creeps would die under the tower. Maybe not kill the whole next creep wave or at the least, uh, they'd all eventually die, and then the next wave's like reset here. Um, with this many creeps, Tidehunter is relatively safe. This is, again, I, I get the benefit of being an immortal, a lot of people recognize this, but Monkey King won't try to kill Tidehunter right now. Why? Because this amount of creeps is worth the same as the Tidehunter kill, pretty much. And so, if Monkey King does try to fight the Tidehunter. I've given Tidehunter a level advantage, and Tidehunter might actually be able to do like a decent amount of damage back when he has five creeps helping him. So um, in the same way as having Equilibrium back here is pretty safe, having a ton of your own creeps over here is also a form of safety because I know that uh, the carry is just going to farm it and not try to pressure my offlaner too much. And if he does, then he's going to miss out on creeps. So uh, in this time, while I'm missing and Tide's like 1v2, he, he really is kind of okay. I mean, he, he maybe doesn't get to do too much right now, you know? But I mean, if I was here, what would we have really done instead? Would we have both tried to dive a Monkey King and Enchantress? Probably not, because we don't have a good matchup. Why would we force like a tough fight on us? So we'd both just be waiting right now. So um, because I could kind of like see that coming. And a lot of this is just like, understanding creep equilibrium and predicting how it's going to look in a little bit to know when you can leave or when you can't leave uh, so in this case i knew i could leave i did leave we had some impact we're going to come over here and stack I took a look at bottom and i was like ah he's not getting pressure that much so i do have time to do this uh, but again even if i go how much am i really doing i'm just keeping him alive which is kind of good but if i stack then he can at least recover that way and i don't know why i waited so long guys this should have been another stack here i missed this this is just a loss of money from my side uh, just a mechanical mistake and this is kind of all we do when we come here right we just kind of like keep him alive but we're not really threatening uh, maybe we could have if I was a better shadow demon player especially now that we got like some levels uh, maybe we could have gone for some like poison kill if I had more mana but I am pretty low I just want to help like get the, the lane equilibrium back so when I take a look at this because monkey king had to use his aoe stun maybe he didn't have to but he did he damaged several creeps and so when we take a look real quick, uh, this in particular, the fact that they have more range creeps than we do, tells me that this will push. So if I, again, leave Tidehunter here, he will be okay creep equilibrium wise. In this case, he's actually pretty low from the damage he took. Um, so maybe I should have actually stuck around here a little bit more. But uh, again, thinking on it, I was like, here's a tango, buddy. I'm off. I'm going to go stack and I'm going to go for a power rune. Um, now, if your offlaner is like more healthy, then, you know, all, all the better. In this case, maybe it was a little risky to leave Tide. Uh, but I'm going to like stand over here. I'm going to go for this and I'm going to walk over here to help secure this. Maybe I should have been here a little sooner. That, that maybe is on me. And also, I'm going to going to mess this up a little bit. Oh, no, not this one. This one. This one's good. At this point, this is... <laughs> guys, I'm going to make a huge mistake later, but I, I helped him get the kill earlier, and we helped keep him alive here. So we, we did two positive things for the mid laner, so we built up some uh, some trust. So later when I screw him over, maybe he, he didn't rage out immediately. You know, I get one mistake for every two good plays. So we kept, kept him alive here. We tried to get the power rune. Didn't get it. You know, that's a bit of luck. And like I said, maybe I should have been here right away instead of trying to do another double stack. I should have just settled for like a one stack and been here right on the dot. Uh, that That's probably on me. I was I was kind of hoping that like, oh, Void Spirit's naturally more mobile than a Nyx. Like uh, maybe I don't need to be there like right away. 
but I probably should have been. And then off of that play, we're gonna come for the Wisdom Rune. We're gonna stack this camp while we're here. And this whole time, the lane is just sitting around here. So even if Tidehunter can't get all the last hits, he's able to get XP pretty safely without dying because creeps are dying right here. And that means he can be under his tower and still get XP. So all of this mid stuff is happening right now. And Tide is just chilling in this area, which means, uh, you know, maybe he didn't get the most gold, but he's at least getting the XP. And in this case, he is able to get a couple last hits by doing some creep aggro. And he's got his anchor smash too. So. Here we are going to stack right, but the creep equilibrium is still in this area because even if you have the small camp spawned, you all experience this, right? You do a small camp pull, sure you deny a little bit, but oftentimes you can screw it up and the lane shoves out again. It's when you stack the small camp that it becomes a lot easier to hold the equilibrium right here and never let it push out. But we've already passed a lot of that. Like at this point, Tidehunter's already level five. And even if they start like completely locking down equilibrium over here tide can now reasonably jungle if we had let him get shut down in the first couple minutes he would have had no other option but because we like played the first few minutes pretty well now tide hunter if they do start doing good equilibrium um then he'll be okay he'll go he'll go do the stacks i started to make and keep up that way after this seven minute stack and wisdom rune i don't have uh, a lot of mana so I'm gonna go home and then I'm gonna think about what I want to do it's getting close to eight minutes so I'm gonna check my mid to see if he needs a bottle refill he does again we're just trying to help him out as much as possible void spirit is a hero who can be active if we give him a good start uh, so we're gonna come here we're gonna like ward for him deward for him and then because it's getting close to eight minutes ah, I screwed up this observer placement this should have been a little further over to the left because then you'll get vision over here and you'll get power and this is <laughs> this one was so bad I, I was so sad when I accidentally did that uh, oh, well, what can you do? I think I came over. Oh, this is actually bad. I, I messed up here, guys. I didn't realize. I should have stayed for the power rune. I must be dumb. I, I must not have been paying attention to the time. Uh, I think just like coming over here, stacking this hard camp with uh, shadow poison, and then staying over here to grab the, the power rune, that would have been a much better play. I'm not sure. I think, was I looking at my energy booster or maybe needing to help Tide? I don't know. I just must not have been paying attention to the time. And uh, that's a big part of Dota. Keeping track of time. We're actually going to get a Monkey King kill here because we didn't get absolutely shut down in the laning stage. And uh, we had like equal levels on our offlaner. He gets a nice tree cut here. I didn't realize we were going to do this, so I was a little slow on the, the first couple Shadow Poisons I could have had. But yeah, we get a Monkey King kill. If we hadn't like done some of the stuff we did earlier, though, to give Tidehunter levels, then we would never have reached that point. When you do this many stacks, you are going to get a little low on XP. I fortunately I picked up a kill here picked up a kill down here and I got the wisdom rune you can still still see I'm only four and a half though uh, approaching 10 minutes I am gonna get some XP from the stacks just the the stack bonus but the nice thing about this is now tidehunter comes here to farm and I'm gonna come to the lane hopefully it's close to me that's most I ideal right but even if it's out here I just like run through the trees right and I just absorb XP while staying way out of sight and I don't really care that I'm not getting last hits because I'm just a position four or just a support, right? If you're five, it's like the same thing. We don't care if we don't get the last hits as much. We'd like it, but we're just happy to get XP. If your off laner is doing that, that's really sad. You know, like he really needs gold. So now we're going to give him uh, some space to farm. This hard camp is worth about 600 XP and 400 gold. And so I will get a bonus uh, from that of the 180 XP and 120 gold. And then, you know, I can't play the lane that much like we talked about, but here I am just getting XP from the lane as well to try to catch up. Uh, I believe Tide should have actually done the ancient stack here too. This ancient stack was worth like uh, 1,360 XP and 730 gold roughly. And then for me, that's about 400 XP and 220 gold. Uh, so that would have been huge in terms of getting me towards level six and just boosting him up. You can see here on the net worth, despite the fact that um, I would consider this a, a much better matchup for their safe lane, we have our Tide Hunter at the top. And if he had done this stack here, you know, he jumps up to like 4.7. Uh, by 10 minutes and I I probably hit six from getting all this solo XP he's gonna actually come here so we're gonna end up splitting some stuff this stack actually gets stolen it's it's not the point of this video it's really sad I just want you all to to be sad with me for that techies comes over after my team fights a bunch and then techies comes over and like steals it they they notice the stack that's really good to do if you're the enemy right uh, if you can identify that has been my game plan 
uh, just run around, do other stuff, then the enemy team should try to like set up a play to smoke and steal stacks because I've dedicated all this time and I'm depending a lot on these stacks to help boost up my cores and get me gold and XP and solo time in the lane. So if you as the enemy team comes and steals all of it, then that just hurts everything, you know, and I don't get the bonus gold or XP. Fortunately, they didn't have the best way to steal stacks is what I thought, but uh, yeah, Techies comes and finishes it off. I'll just show you, actually. We took several winning team fights around here because they tried to steal the stacks and contest. And so you see, we all get like caught up. We're like, oh yeah, let's go, let's go kill things, let's go get them. And in that time, here comes Techies. Like, ah, I have a team? No way. He comes over here, just like AOE blasts everything. Oh man, look at his net worth shoot up. He got two levels off my stack. We do win this game at least. Otherwise, I would have been pretty salty about this. Uh, I guess I am salty about this. I'm mentioning it here. Uh, but off those winning fights, like, we, we get some of this. Um, but uh, even earlier when you saw, right, Tidehunter was on par with the Monkey King, which is already pretty good. So I will make a future video for other, other things you can do because uh, there is some stuff like uh, Creep Dragging that you can do to approach uh, really tough lanes, but this is one of them when you have someone who can clear stacks. So give it a shot in your pub games. Do give a heads up to your off laner, like that's what I'm gonna try to do. So please just be careful, you will catch up from the stacks, right? Let them know so they're less likely to get tilted where it's like, where's my four support, you know? I was like, hey, this is a really bad lane. We try to get equilibrium here. I'm gonna go get stacks, you're gonna recover. It's all going to be okay. Let them know uh, because you may have the game knowledge, but they don't. And then they play over aggressive while they're 1v2, they feed. That's when they get tilted, they blame you, right? But uh, the plan works if everyone knows their part. So the higher up you are, the easier it is to work. I get that, but I'm, I I don't know. There, You know, there's not much you can do. If you try to play the lane in a bad matchup, that's gonna be bad. So you gotta try to do something else and you gotta try to communicate that to your off laner and work together. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Let me know if it was helpful and I will see you in another video. Uh, and you will maybe see me if I have a camera by then. Bye.